Jesus. You want to say his name with me together? Jesus. There is no other name under heaven by which we shall be saved. Jesus is coming. (laughs) He's coming again. As he came as a baby first, his first advent, we celebrated just a couple of months ago. Man, how time is just marching on. Now we're in 2013, and uh, we are, are two weeks away from Easter. Actually, I should say Resurrection Sunday. The King is coming. In His first advent, He faced the cross. He made the way possible for us to know God, to be His children. The second coming, I am telling you, is coming. He is coming again. But I want to you to turn to a scripture that though he physically will be coming into our world again, he has established his kingdom that is now. Would you turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 25. Luke 17, 20 through 25. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we read the Word of God. Luke chapter 17, 20 through 25. A few verses earlier, it talks about Jesus heading to Jerusalem. Last week, well, two weeks ago, uh, my message was that Jesus steadfastly or, or fixed his, his, his face toward Jerusalem. And he was determined. He was determined to go to Jerusalem because time was, was now for him to suffer. And so he's on his way. He goes through Jericho. He goes through Samaria. He, he is on his way to Jerusalem. He encounters different things and different people. He heals people. He, he encounters Zacchaeus. Just some tremendous passages and stories in the Bible that we come across. But here is a passage that I want us to focus on. On his way to Jerusalem, he encounters Pharisees. Verse 20. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom, when the kingdom of God would come, He answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. (coughs) For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, The days will come when you you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. They will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. You may be seated. The coming kingdom. I believe that we are in the last days. Now I don't have a neatly organized chart to show you of all the way things are going to come and happen. I don't believe that we can chart exactly what is going to happen and how it's going to come about. Now we can take scripture and we can formulate in our own minds what we think it might be, but it is only conjecture. Now there are very specific things in the scripture it does tell us that are going to happen. And we can approximate how things might come about, but it is still only conjecture. 
We do know. We do know Jesus is coming again. We do know that in our time, there are specific things that indicate that it is soon. But of course, over 2,000 years, there have been many prophets prophets, and many people who have said, Jesus is going to come in in my day. And they have passed on, they've gone to heaven, and they found out really when he's coming. And we are still waiting. Waiting. It was the same way when Jesus walked the earth. His disciples, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they all wanted to know how things are going to happen, when they're going to happen, and what you know they needed to do about it. And Jesus tells them. They ask the question, when will the kingdom of God come when does when is all this going to happen when is God going to establish his rule his reign on the earth and be present and people will will see and know that it is almighty God and Jesus gives them an answer that they really didn't expect or quite understand Nor do people get it today. Jesus says here in verse 20, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, See here, see there, for indeed, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. So the kingdom of God is already here. What Jesus is saying. What he is saying to the Pharisees. The kingdom of God is within you. What Jesus is pointing out. Is that God has established the way for us to come to him. And to be in his kingdom. To be a part of his plan. To do what he has called us to do. From the beginning. God established that those who seek Him will find Him. Abraham, he found the way. It was said of him that he was considered the friend of God. That he was righteous because he believed God. And God accredited to him as righteousness. Our faith. Our faith is that step by which we receive his presence. We enter into his presence. And it is the same for every person. Beginning with Adam and Eve to the end of time. The last person who places their faith in Jesus Christ. Before he cracks the sky. Before the sound of the trumpet. Every person who believes God. Is in his kingdom. For his kingdom resides in them. You. Me, when we place our faith in Jesus Christ, when we believe God in His purpose, His plan, we have entered into the kingdom of God. It's in us. Kind of sounds like a Nike, not a Nike, a, a Gatorade commercial. That's what it is. You remember the Gatorade commercial, Is It In You? You guys, you guys remember You drink Gatorade, don't you? About the only time we get Gatorade at our house is when somebody gets sick. And then it's not in us. Anyway. (laughs) Oh, no. I'm going to dig a hole for myself. Anyway, to backpedal back to, to, uh, that's a bad illustration, ain't it? 
Uh, I'm glad to get over this time of flu bug stuff, right? Get that behind us. Uh, spring is here, summer, and, and we're going to get that, that uh, sickness stuff away from us. The kingdom of God. Back to the kingdom of God. It is in you when, when you believe, when you believe God, when you trust Him, when you search for Him, you find Him, you are a child of God. The kingdom of God is within you. He dwells in you. Some people don't get it. The Pharisees, they didn't get it. There are people in our world, you will encounter, I encounter, there are people in churches that don't get it. They're still looking at the kingdom of God as something that you attain, that you work your way into, or you, you do enough stuff and you make it because you've put enough good that outweighs the bad. Or you've been able to, to create uh, uh, enough good stuff that makes you acceptable. And God wants us to understand that's not it. It is by faith that you enter into the kingdom of God. It is by faith that you receive Him. You come into and are placed under His authority, His reign, His uh, kingdom. And you know what happens when, when, when you believe, when you choose to trust Him? A whole new world opens up. That's the kingdom of God. It's the reign of Christ in our hearts, in our lives. It's the realm in which God rules over us. And He begins to guide and lead us. We become not pawns in His kingdom to tell us what to do and what... We become a part of His plan. We begin to move along with His Spirit's, His Spirit's guidance and do what He's called us to do. It becomes like a well-oiled machine or better than that. We become a family that interacts with one another, supplying the, for the needs that are there and, and making up the difference whenever there is something that is lacking. It's an incredible thing when we begin to see how God is at work in us. This is the kingdom of God. It is in you. It's not out there somewhere that you pursue. Jesus said, seek ye first. What? The kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then all these things shall be added to you. So it's not out there that we need to be seeking. We need to be seeking for God within. We need to examine our hearts. Why do you think Paul calls for believers when they come to the communion table to examine their hearts, that they are right with God, that they are doing what he calls them to do, that we are living rightly with one another? Because any time we allow sin to, to begin building up separation and barriers between us and God, between us, us and each other, then we are limiting the work of God in the realm that we live. And either God removes us out of the way, or He brings us into discipline in order to be changed to make us right. That's how he works. Is it in you? He told the disciples in verse 22, The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. 
And they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them. Don't follow them. Don't get caught up in the, uh, the stuff that goes on. Even in religious circles. Don't look here. Don't look there. Don't get caught up in it. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part of under heaven, so is the Son of Man in his, will be in his day. And that's a hard one. There's all kinds of conjectures of what that could be. There, interestingly enough, there, there's a cult that was started uh, using that passage of Scripture. And this woman in Korea, she, she has taken on that persona of the lightning and, and, and she calls herself the Messiah. And people have gravitated to her and this cult has, has started. Over the decades, over the centuries, different ones have proclaimed to be the Messiah. Look here. Look there. As the lightning flashes from one part of heaven to another, so shall, so also the Son of Man will be in His day. His appearance will be immediate. So how are we going to be ready? How are we going to be prepared? By simply submitting to the rule and reign of Christ in our life. The kingdom of God is within you. If you have not placed your faith in Jesus Christ and received Him as your Lord and Savior, the kingdom of God is is not yet within you. You're still looking outwardly. But when you do believe on Him, God comes to dwell in your heart and life. You become a child of God. In John 1 it says, you have, you know, He has made us to become children of God, even to those who believe in the name of the Son of God. He's given us the right to become children, His children, by faith. The kingdom of God is greater than anything we can ever imagine. It's a whole new world. Do not limit your understanding to what God is wanting to accomplish and do in your life. By simply going through the motions of doing church, doing Sunday school, doing religious things. Pursue, seek first the kingdom of God. That means pursue God in knowing Him. Explore in the Word of God what it means to you and what God wants to say to you personally in His Word. Ask Him. Ask Him. God has given His Holy Spirit so that we can know Him personally. Ask Him. God, show me yourself today. Show me what you mean in this Scripture. Show me what you're doing in my world, in my community. Show me what you want me or how you want me to live. One of the main things that God showed me over this past week, been on vacation, had a very nice time. And one of the main things that he pointed out to me and he asked me to do just be his child. 
be my child. What does a child do? A child is dependent solely on its parents. Providing for, caring for, directing, giving uh, help, teaching. It's very significant that we are called children of God. I think right now for First Baptist Church, God is calling us to simply be His children. That means we're teachable, we're submissive to Him, we're yielded, and we're dependent on God. To not be dependent on any other thing, not... Be allegiant, put our allegiance to any other thing, but to simply be His child. Coming under His rule, His reign, and walking in that, living that each day. That's what God's called us to do. Are you prepared to do that? Are you prepared to examine your heart and simply see if you are a child of God? Or simply truly see if the kingdom of God is within you? Let's do that right now. Would you bow your head? This morning... The invitation is to enter into the kingdom of God by faith, by surrendering, by receiving Christ and surrendering to His Lordship, His kingship in your life. If you have not, if you have not made that decision, taken that step of faith, will you do that right now? And simply say, yes, Jesus, I will. Just a simple prayer. Yes, Jesus, I will. I believe that you gave your life on the cross for my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God and that God raised you from the dead. And I ask that you come into my life and save me. That's simply what you're saying by placing your faith in Jesus and saying yes to God. If that's the, your prayer, I invite you. When we begin to sing this invitation song, you'd step out of your seat and you'd come down the aisle, come down out of the, the balcony, down the stairs and down to the front and say, take my hand and say, Pastor Lauren, I'm coming because I'm receiving Christ as my Savior and Lord. I want to be a child of God. I'll pray with you and encourage you in your new walk with Jesus and being in the kingdom of God. There are others of you that you've been saved, you have followed Jesus, but you have not, you've not been baptized, you've not walked in obedience and made that, that step of faith. You need to be baptized or you need to make First Baptist Church, your church home. Or maybe simply you have a need in your life and you need prayer and you want to come and kneel. I invite you to do so. During this time, you respond to what God's saying to you. Heavenly Father, we ask that you'd have your way. We ask, God, that you'd move in our hearts and lives to accomplish your work. that the kingdom of God will be within us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Would you stand as we sing? You respond to what God is saying to you. You come.